Chapter 2, Crash Landing. Sophie was so busy after that, she didn't have time to think about the golden sunburn or, or look inside the purple bat. They can read from pocket. She swept the floor on the, in the throne, polished all the queen's crown, and helped help cook, decorate a huge chocolate cake that would be served to her majesty at tea time. After that, Sophie went to gather apples and in the orchard. She worked quickly, picking all the fruit and lower the branches just, and then fetching a ladder to reach the apples. Higher up, she'd fill, just filled a second basket when she heard shouting on the other side of the garden. <laughs> the, the wind suddenly blew stronger, making the apple tree sway. Sophie's ladder rocked to and and she held on tight to keep her balance. A purple shape zoomed overhead and a terrible screech set a shiver down her back. The awful cry ended up in a thump followed by uh, the sound of cracking branches and something had, had hit one of the trees. Sophie quickly climbed down the ladder and hurried through the orchard. Broken branches lay on the ground not far away and leaves were floating down. Sending down her basket, she went closer. Had a bird crashed into a tree? It must have been in a pretty big one to cause so much damage. Maybe a raven or an eagle. The poor thing could be badly hurt. As she, as she eat, it got nearer, she saw the half of the tree branches were snapped off and there was a long black mark across its trunk. Something wriggled under one of the broken branches and a puff of gray dust drifted into the air. Sophie spun around to call for help, but a whimper noise stopped her. That didn't sound like a bird. That didn't sound like a bird. Oh, her heart began to race. Maybe that... Puff of gray wasn't dust at all. Maybe it was smoke. An amazing thought popped into her head as she crept at, at the right at the damaged tree, hardly daring to breathe. She crouched down. She lifted up the broken branch. The, the creature hiding underneath Eith was purple. Its skin looked soft, but it had bumpy ridges running down its back. And along its turn, you know, another puff of smoke rose from its nostril as it coughed. Then it rolled onto four clawed on feet, shook its web-like wings, and looked at Sophie with wide amber eyes. Sophie knew what it was. She listened carefully to many tales about the men and creatures. This one was a dragon. Are you real? Sophie whispered, reaching to such a creature. The dragon gave a snort of alarm and jumped backwards, its amber eyes narrowed, fixing on Sophie. A gust of wind rustled leaves on the trees. It's all right. I won't hurt you, Sophie said gently. The creature was smaller than she thought a dragon would be a little shorter than the gardener's, than a gar than the gardener's dog. Well, the roundness of the cute purple snout make it look like a... A bit like a puppy. The dragon crept forward her, crept toward her, and sniffed her. Swishing its long purple tail. That's it. I won't hurt him, Sophie repeated. The dragon came even closer until she could feel its warm breath in her face. Then it gave her a cheek, a long, slobbery lick, and sat back on its haunches. Sophie left and tried to wipe out the slobber. She glanced at the broken apple tree. I guess he didn't mean to land there. I wonder why he crashed. The little dragon sniffed the air and then tried to stretch its web wings, but its left one wouldn't straighten. The dragon tried again, but the left wing dangled uselessly by its side, and at last the dragon gave up. A large tear rolled around out of its eye and dripped onto the ground. 
cried Sophie. Does it really hurt? The little dragon saint met the ground, still crying. Sophie patted its, its bumpy back, wishing you know what to do. The creature's sobbing was mixed with a dragonish growling, and as if it were trying to talk to her, the wind rose again, bending the trees, sending leaves going on the ground. Oh dear, I wish I knew how to help you. It mu must have been horrible crashing like that. A lump came to her throat, kneeling down. She threw the creature. She threw her arms around the creature and kissed its pointy ears. The dragon stopped sobbing. When Sophie drew back, she realized that her apron pocket felt very warm. She reached inside for the little bag, bag of stones she'd almost forgotten about. When she lifted it out, she knew at once that something strange was happening. Fingers trembling, and she's, she opened the bag and poured the rough, the gray, the rough gray stones onto the ground. One of them wasn't any longer. It had turned a deep glowing amber, the exact same color as as the dragon size. Sophie picked up the wand it up and watched the stone glow brighter. In the palm around it became hard to not hard to so hot she didn't think she could hold it anymore. Yet somehow she didn't want to let go. Crack the stone broke into two pieces. The orange would fit into there were two parts the stone were gray and ordinary again, except Sophie looked closer. The stone was hollow. Inside, at each part, was a tiny cave filled with purple crystals. Um, she gazed at the two pieces of rock in turn, studying the little four fist of crystals inside. Right. They glittered in the sun like a like hidden treasure. They're really beautiful, she said to herself. Pretty, agreed. Eat the dragon. Sophie's mouth dropped open. What did you say? It's pretty, repeated the dragon. But when her eyes welled with tears again, but my wing hurts. He tried to flap his crooked wing. Sophie it took a moment to get her breath back. You're talking? She gasped. That's amazing. I think this stone must be magic. The creature blinked and forgot to cry. Well, it is very shiny. Sophie smiled. Maybe you see magic all the time, but it's never happened to me before. I'm Sophie. Sophie, said the dragon, trying to out the name. Then he coughed a little flame shot out of his mouth. My name is Cloud Twister, but everyone calls me Cloudy for sure. I'm a storm dragon.